apart from this, I'm really into into ICIs. I mean, it's something that have to to happen and and will will bring a lot of value and use to to Cosmos. The things that we develop are things that we also experience. Even if you are an experienced person in this ecosystem, those things can happen to you. So if you are delegating, delegating Atom and you will have like free airdrops, most of the people, I think, they, they will just, just sell the consumer chain tokens buy a atom and redelegate those atoms in order to get to get more amount of the consumer chains welcome to the bare metal podcast so uh welcome everybody to the bare metal podcast uh, well i want to welcome uh jose hernandez from uh, stakely uh welcome jose hello thank you for for inviting me to, to this session how are you doing Really well. After these days of holidays and, and everything, it's time to, to move everything and, and keep working very hard in this, in this um, ecosystem. Cool. So let's start with uh, what we always begin with. And that is, of course, what's your setup? Where are you guys hosted? Okay. So um, we have tried a lot of um, providers and we have done a lot of an analysis to, to them and, and things like that. And we decided to split our services in several providers. So we are in some things. We use uh, DataLocean for some things, OVH for no other things. And, and also we have two uh, weird providers that we, we, with weird, I mean, that, that, like not a lot of people usually use them. But the, we we like them to 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 use it for specific things. But we are mainly using DataLocean and and OVH. We also used Hethner in the in the past. We have already migrated al almost everything over there. And and yeah, so that, that's it. That that is how how we have it. So, so what did you guys leave in Hetzner? Are these like RPC nodes and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah no, no validator nodes. So right. as, as, as um, we don't think it's critical to have RPCs in Hetzner because obviously we have also to, to think about the financial things of, of this um, sector. We are using it only for RPCs purposes, not validators or, or mm -hmm. things like that. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. How, how many people sort of work? Are you guys uh, validate multiple ecosystems, right? If I recall yeah. correctly. Yeah. So currently we are validating almost 39 or 40 networks and some of them, well, I think half, half of them are Cosmos, obviously, because it's, it's our uh, main business. And other ecosystem are some are Polkadot, Solana, Near, Avalanche, Ethereum, Phantom, uh, Covalent, Silo, Aptos, Concordium, and I think I'm forgetting some others, but mainly those ones. So yeah, so we I'm, are quite spread. I'm always curious, and, and nobody wants to tell me, like, what is the difference between validating for Cosmos and these other uh, sort of ecosystems? If you compare it, if you're running validators, Cosmos is easier in general. Is it harder? Uh, you know, what's do you have a sense? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, first of all, I want to 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 say that I'm more I'm more in the part of Cosmos, so I don't have a deep knowledge about. The, the other networks. There are other guys in the in the company which uh, are working in, in that part. But from what I talk with them and we compare things and everything, uh, we always um, end up uh, saying that Cosmos is the easier uh, the easier ecosystem or blockchains to to validate for. And also when someone uh, asks me hey, I, I would like to, to validate and, and can you recommend me where should I start or how should I do it? I always say, go to Cosmos. They have really good um, support from the community, not only for users, but also the developer part and also for validators. 
very uh, a lot of open source things and 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 a lot of validators uh, are sharing their their own tools. So if you want to give it a try and become a validator, start with with a Cosmos based chains. Do you think it's also a factor of like the Cosmos SDK Tendermint stack? It's, it seems like it's really well sort of tuned and it brings consistency to the ecosystem. Would you say that's a factor in like sort of being the, the validation being an easier job because just the software is well structured and I guess easier to use? I don't know, but maybe the good thing about Cosmos is that it's almost every chain uh, um, in order to deploy a validator in every every chain of, of, of the ecosystem, the process is almost the same. So it's like you have um, a, a lot of content and a lot of tutorials that you can you can follow in order to deploy a, a validator. So right. it's not only one source of content, but um, as many as chains we have in in the ecosystem. So that that makes a lot of uh, things easier to to right, in order to do it. Yeah. In fact, if I remember well, when I started uh, to deploy Cosmos-based chains, I uh, didn't only look for one tutorial, but for many different ones, and pick the things that I would like for, uh, that I I liked from each of them, and then I only I I have my own way of doing of do the the things but yeah okay okay um that's fair i've looked at your website and i found that you guys do quite a few things for the community so could you sort of give us a rundown like what's the uh, what's the stuff that you consider you know is, is let's say unique to stakely or not 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 many other validators offer we have always focused in the in tools for for the community and that's why we started to become very active or, or yeah, very, very active in the in the uh, channels for example in telegram in discord and um, spe specifically in the spanish ones and we realized that the the thing that we lack from from the uh, in the in the ecosystem are education th educational content so that's why we started to deploy our own blog in in our website. We also uh, saw a lot of problems with tokens, so we decided to to develop a multi-coin faucet for mainnets, but also uh, for testnets. So, so can we stay on this one for a second? This was uh, this was surprising yeah. to me. Yeah, I saw the multi-coin faucet. So what's the reasoning behind like offering people like essentially like tiny amounts of free money? Is it like you want them to go and be able to experiment with the network or or like what why why are you building a a, a faucet? Mainnet faucet. Yeah, so th there are two main purposes of 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 this. The one the the first one you, you have already mentioned it. So if uh, anyone wants to give it a try to a network uh, normally, you have to 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 do a lot of uh, hops in order to to get into into a, a ecosystem, a, a new chain. So we wanted to sort and make things easier for new e users, and that's the reason we started this faucet. So anyone that wants to try it and and work in a chain can just make a request, and you already have tokens in in that chain. And the other part is something that I, I, in, in myself, I tested it, that it was um, delegating all the tokens from your wallet or spending or swapping all the tokens from your wallet. And then you are, you, you don't have anything to pay for fees and you are in the same point as I was mentioning before. You, you, you cannot pay fees. So you have to do the all the way uh, back to go to a sex, change the tokens, send it to a, a um, compatible uh, change that it, it, was, it would be Cosmos, then change it in Osmosis for another thing and go to, I don't know, uh, Juno or things like that. So that's the second second reason. We started with... Right, right. Yeah, that actually happened to me. Number. 
That actually happened yeah. to me. Uh, I, I had this, so, uh, I staked everything and then I wasn't able to call uh, withdraw delegator rewards <laughs> to get the money out. So I had to get yeah. money to get my money out. Uh, so I didn't realize yeah. I can go to your faucet and solve the problem. So thank you for that. That's... Yeah, so that, that that's the reason. If if you see with the, the things that we develop are things that we also experience, even if you are uh, an experienced person in this ecosystem, those things can happen to you. So those are the, the main things that we see and we want to give it a solution. There are already some protocols that um, doesn't allow you to change to swap all the tokens or something like that. But it's in Cosmos, I don't think it's something that people are taking into account. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's actually really cool. Now I'll remember I should go and use the faucet if that uh, happens to me again because we do we do test on uh, yeah. new nets as well. Uh, so do you, what do you think about uh, MEV in, in Cosmos? Do you guys run MEV? Um, what's your general take on on uh, maximum extractable value? Yeah. So in the Ethereum part, we are running MevBoost. So we are supporting all the relays that are over there. And regarding Cosmos, we have heard about that, that with Skip protocol and, and we wanted to give it a try. So uh, some weeks ago, we started to, to run uh, the Terra 2 te for Skip protocol for Terra 2 testnet. And I think it's something very, um, it's something that we have to, to have in this ecosystem because uh, there are a lot of use for, for that. And um, obviously also the blockchains are working uh, for a financial um, goal also, and this helps to bring more value to, to the ecosystem. Do you think it's important for your delegators that you guys run MEF and are able to also like distribute sort of uh, rewards or do you think that's it's it's not a big sort of pool for your community? Yeah, I think it uh, everything depends on on what what you have said. What you are going to do with those uh, rewards? Are you going to use it just as a uh, payment for your services? Are you going to use it for the community? Are you going to give it back to the uh, to the whole um, ecosystem the, the, for the change that you are uh, doing MEV? So it's something uh, philosophical, I think, to, to talk about that. And, and I have not give, give it a, a thought yet. Mm -hmm. And I I, I don't know what what I will uh, what we will do with the the rewards, but I think those rewards should be to um, to like a, a little portion to the operators that are working for for Map and the other for the community. Right. What uh, yeah. what other activities would you um, sort of mention here? Like I know, like I'm interested in the RPC uh, services that you guys provide. I don't think many people provide that, but I'm wondering if there's also other stuff you want to talk about. Yeah. So as you mentioned, we also have a, a load balancer where uh, we, which endpoints are feed with public RPCs for 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 from different uh, operators. And everyone can add theirs if if they want. They just have to do a pull request in, in our GitHub, and that's it. And the other tool that we are developing also, it's a staking dashboard. So as I mentioned before, we try to give solu solution to, to, to things. And one thing that we realize is that a lot of users don't have like a easy way to manage or track their staking rewards um, or they have a lot of wallets uh, in different ecosystems which are crazy because you can have like five or six uh, extensions in, in your in your browser so we are developing a staking dashboard which will support everything we are we are validating for and it doesn't matter if you are delegating to other validator. We we also provide information for 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 the, the users, and currently it's a beta version. So 
Um, it's not easy to, to access. I mean, it's not publicly in our website, but if uh, anyone wants to, to, to access to it and give it a try, uh, I will share the link in a comment or, or I, I don't know where, but I, I will share the, the link to, to access to it. And the password in order to, to access to it is I love staking, which also uh, will be in the comments or in the detailed part of, of this podcast. That's some interesting alpha there. Thanks. I'll definitely go ahead and uh, try that out. Uh, that's so, so this is sort of like a account or, or account centric view of all my staking operations across all the chains where you guys validate. So I walk in, I connect my Kepler and I can see all my sort of um, all my delegations across these chains and I can see where I have outstanding rewards. Yeah, so um, when you when you access to the website uh, to, to the application to the staking dashboard, you have the choice to to select a Ethereum wallet or a Kepler wallet. If you choose the Kepler wallet, um, you will have to sign a transaction in order to verify that that wallet is, is yours. <clears throat> so once you do that, you will see all of your addresses in the in the side part of, of the application and well the, the ones that have the same derivation path that's a new topic that we can we... right right yeah that's technical but if these are related wallets likely you'll be able to see them across the ecosystem yeah right. so you will have uh, uh, you, you will be able to access to to all all those uh, data of the chains and if you have um Validate uh, if you are delegating to us in any of, of the Cosmos chains, yeah, just with one will be enough. We, we are already uh, saving all the data, but if it, it, it's the first time you are access, access, accessing to, to this uh, application and you are not delegating to us in any or, or the or in any blockchains, then uh, there won't be any historical data and we will start to to save data from that time mm -hmm. from the first usage of the website okay yeah yeah that's it mm -hmm. i've also noticed on your website you talk about staking insurance so can you talk a little bit about staking insurance like how do you guys consider that uh, you know have you ever used the the, the staking insurance fund uh, you know how like how do you dimension this you know how, how do you know how much you should put into the pool like how do you how do you work on this okay so regarding the insurance it's something we think about that from the very beginning uh, of our uh, activity and it was uh, a really basic and manually thing so part of our rewards we are uh, saving them for these purposes to in order to to cover any misbehavior or slashing and so it's very uh, a centralized way of, of doing of doing things we have already contacted several companies about uh, that are willing to 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 do this kind of insurance i mean uh, in a decentralized way ways way way see, way like um like nexus mutual and things like that but either they are very 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 expensive in order to cover all the funds of a validator or they are not supporting all the chains only polkadot ethereum and blockchains like that so uh, there is not um a, a easy way or a right way to to have this kind of service decentralized and we, we we are investigating about how to 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 do it and no we we have not so you would say yeah i, I was going gonna say just one thing that we we have not ever used it so okay, uh, no hopefully I, I i hope that we will never use it right yeah um, i hope so too uh but so to summarize what you're saying i guess that what i've taken yeah. from it is this is your like best effort sort of personal diligence uh, on your side to set aside some funds to possibly, you know, if, if the need ever arises, hopefully not to compensate basically your delegators. But there's, 
what you're saying is you'd like to do this in an improved way to to say custody this this funds with somebody who will then you know follow the rules and and do the payout so your delegators can have even more assurance that it's going to happen instead of now they have to trust you right to to like actually follow through with the insurance if if a slashing event went to happen and that's what you don't like about this yeah that's it that's okay. it okay yeah. because um it, it it's it, it makes no sense to to have to have that decision in our hands i mean if a, a slashing event occurred uh, and we have a insurance it has to be something automatically because right. we we could say no that was because of somebody else uh, fault and we are not going to to cover that because all the things so right, right. we would like to have it in a very good way but uh, uh, currently we, we, we haven't found anything yet because the the amount that you, you have to pay for the, those services if, if you want to have it decentralized according to what we have asked is to pay a percentage of all the total uh, uh, money or cover uh, yeah, of token that you want to 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 insure to insurance, right. yeah. yeah, and that if you make um, the, the maths, it, it's it's it makes some sense. I mean, we we have like 400 millions of TVL, and a little amount of of percentage in order to pay that service could be a, a hundreds of thousands of, for yeah. for that for that service. So. We, we are not um, uh, earning for, for only to pay to, to, to pay the things. insurance. So it, it's crazy. Yeah, I wonder if there could be some product like involving like first loss. So you could put up some collateral. So the first loss is paid from your pool and then you have to pay much less to cover like the, the remainder. I don't know if this even exists or if somebody could make it, but this sounds, this almost sounds like a smart contract could do it, you know, monitor for a slashing event and then the reimburse. Uh, basically reimburse those delegators. So maybe that's a you know that's an interesting product somebody can somebody can build. So we've talked a lot about you know your support for the ecosystem and you're doing quite a few things and kudos on that. How how big is the team that focuses on Cosmos? It's like everybody is doing little things in every every mm -hmm. every ecosystem. So in total we are 14 people in in Stakely. Some of them are working in all the ecosystems. Some some ones are doing the translations of the of the blog, of, of the posts and and things. So maybe like five people or six are are working in in in, in Cosmos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's well, a lot I, of stuff they built. In fact, yeah. In fact, I think that there are more. There are more. Yeah. So like eight or, or, or nine because uh, almost everyone is having a little a little interaction with with cosmos content or cosmos technical things okay i get it well kudos on all the stuff that you're providing you know these these are uh, pretty cool public goods so we've talked a lot about your contributions to the to the ecosystem so now i'm wondering what do you think about uh, the future of cosmos about where things are moving Right. In particular, like there's a lot of discussion, for example, around ICS. Um, what's your experience with interchain security? Have you guys, you know, somehow taken taken part uh, in experimenting with it? Do you have any uh, any like operational um, experience you can talk about? Yeah. So uh, we have been part of the of the testnet of of ICAs, and it was a really a good way to see how validators interact with 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 each other. It's something that I was also mentioned this in in other uh, podcasts that I've participated. That the the Cosmos validator uh, ecosystem are becoming more more friendly as the time passed, and that's something very 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 good. And regarding the IC ICS. I think it's something that have to have to be because um, in in Cosmos I think we have been quite um, I don't know how to to say that but quite plain or 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 with very little value quite clear yeah so so it's like 
what what's Cosmos have? It's only a, a, a chain that have value, but what what else? I mean, what 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 are we going to do with that value? And I think the 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 answers for for that will be ICS. Thanks thanks to that, we will give a really good use to Cosmos Hub and those uh, value that that is remaining in the in the chain, and and will be very 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 useful. There are a lot of things that um, have to be clear. For example. Uh, how many chains are we going to support? Are we go, are, um, is it something that would be compulsory to run? What will happen if we have like 50 new chains in the in the Cosmos Hub? What about the e-chains validator? Are, are they going to are they really going to to give support to every chain that is going to participate in the in the ICS, so yeah, there, there are a lot of questions that I don't know if uh, we will have answers now or, or not. But according to what I know and what I think uh, it's been talked about, uh, it's it's quite weird. It's quite weird how everything is is happening. So what? Mm -hmm. Apart from this, so, sorry, just one thing. Apart from this, I'm really into into ICS. I mean, it's something that has to to happen and and will will bring a lot of value and use to to cost to Atom. Right. But so so you're, just, you're saying you like the idea of ICS. You think it's great to have Cosmos Hub as as a as a, like a source of security, as leasing out its security to these other chains, yeah. brings more use to uh, brings more to Atom. But there are some technical questions which are perhaps unanswered and operationally must be worked out in order for this to be a successful sort of like let's say product market fit. Yeah, and and also it's like um, consumer chains will have to pay like a. Uh higher service for those validators that means that part of the inflation are going to go to the to the delegators of atom but uh, it's something uh, very very uh, uh, dangerous because if you are delegating delegating atom and you will have like free airdrops let's say uh, who 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 are going to to keep those those assets? I mean, most of most of the people, I think, they they will just just sell the consumer chain tokens by atom and delegate again and redelegate those atoms in order to get to get more amount of the consumer chains. So I don't right. know. I, I, it's so you're worried it could cost it. like more dumping or, or like sort of yeah. sell pressure on the consumer chain tokens if people actually do that, right? Yeah, that's. How, I didn't think of this uh, earlier. That's yeah. an interesting how, point. However, on the other hand, it's something very um, very useful because that means that the protocols that are going to jump into consumer chains have to be um, a very good protocol or, or, or project. That have a really good use and utility and, and bring a lot of value to the to the cosmos ecosystem because if not they are going just to to be um, damp uh, very frequently right right yeah 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 that's a that's a actually a very good point so let me ask you the 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 other part of this question or the converse part what do you think is the future of, of sovereign chains in Cosmos? I mean, the very if you go back, the very original thesis was let's have a you know thousands of or a thousand app chains or hundreds of app chains. What's your take on this? Like, does it make sense to spin up sovereign chains? In what cases? Like, do you have do you have some take on this? Yeah, so I don't think it's something that uh, will keep increasing because uh, there are a lot of work behind that. I mean, you have to contact a lot of new validators. Validators are also seeing that blockchains that they were supporting are giving uh, zero value to, to, the, to the ecosystem or they have stopped uh, their um, releases because of the VR market or, or something like that. So we are also seeing a lot of validators uh, getting out of different chains and that's, that's uh, 
a signal that we have to to inter to interpret. So it's like I don't think mm, there would be a lot of uh, new blockchain so sovereign blockchains in Cosmos, and they will tend to to use or the consumer chains. As, as people are, are doing, or developing in a already develop, um, um, deployed blockchain like Osmosis or Juno, you know, the ones that support uh, Cosmo Wasm uh, module. Smart contracts. Yeah, smart mm -hmm. contracts. Or uh, go to the new part that it's becoming, that it's the the Celestia dimension and and, and modular chains. Right, I get that. Okay, that's uh, uh, that's an interesting take. Uh, it was I, I'm still thinking about that comment about you know essentially you're getting if you if you if I'm a delegator of Atom on Cosmos Hub with ICS I'm getting tokens from these consumer chains. Those tokens are not locked, so uh, there is really this like sell pressure uh, building up. That's a uh, it's that's a really interesting point. So that's something to think about. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, Jose, for coming on to the coming onto the podcast and having a chat uh, with me. Uh, hope to see you again next time, and uh, it was great talking. Thank you, thank you very much for for having me here, and for letting me uh, talking about all of the things that we have talked. All right, good luck with your with all your work, uh, especially on Cosmos. Thank you. <laughs>